Hello and welcome to Meditating the Word. I'm so glad you joined us. We're reading the entire Bible this year in chronological order. If you'd like to download a copy of the reading plan, just go to blueletterbible.com. You'll find a link in the notes. The translation I'm reading from is the World English Bible, but feel free to follow along in your favorite translation. This is Day 59. We're reading from the Book of Numbers. The Fourth Book of Moses, commonly called Numbers, chapters 11 through 13. The people were complaining in the ears of the Lord. When the Lord heard it, his anger burned, and the Lord's fire burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. The people cried to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire abated. The name of that place was called Taberah, because the Lord's fire burned among them. The mixed multitude that was among them lusted exceedingly, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. There is nothing at all except this manna to look at. The manna was like coriander seed, and it looked like delium. The people went around, gathered it, and ground it in mills, or beat it in mortars, and boiled it in pots, and made cakes of it. Its taste was like the taste of fresh oil. When the dew fell on the camp in the night, the manna fell on it. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, every man at the door of his tent. The Lord's anger burned greatly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servants so badly? Why haven't I found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I brought them out that you should tell me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing infant to the land which you swore to their fathers? Where could I get meat to give all these people? For they weep before me, saying, Give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. If you treat me this way, please kill me right now if I have found favor in your sight, and don't let me see my wretchedness. The Lord said to Moses, Gather to me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with you. I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the Spirit which is on you, and will put it on them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you don't bear it yourself alone. Say to the people, Sanctify yourselves in preparation for tomorrow, and you will eat meat, for you have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat, and you will eat. You will not eat just one day, or two days, or five days, or ten days, or twenty days, but a whole month, until it comes out at your nostrils, and it is loathsome to you, because you have rejected the Lord who is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why did we come out of Egypt? Moses said, The people among whom I am are six hundred thousand men on foot, and you have said, I will give them meat, that they may eat a whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them, to be sufficient for them? Shall all the flesh of the sea be gathered together for them, to be sufficient for them? The Lord said to Moses, Has the Lord's hand grown short? Now you will see whether my word will happen to you or not. Moses went out and told the people the Lord's words. And he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them around the tent. The Lord came down in the cloud, and spoke to him, and took of the spirit that was on him, and put it on the seventy elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did so no more. 
but two men remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad, the name of the other, Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were of those who were written, but had not gone out to the tent, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his chosen men, answered, My lord Moses, forbid them. Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Moses went into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. A wind from the Lord went out and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, about a day's journey on this side, and a day's journey on the other side, around the camp, and about two cubits above the surface of the earth. The people rose up all that day, and all of that night, and all the next day, and gathered the quails. He who gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all out for themselves around the camp. While the meat was still between their teeth, before it was chewed, the Lord's anger burned against the people, and the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. The name of that place was called Kibrath Hatava, because there they buried the people who lusted. From Kibrath Hatava, the people traveled to Hazaroth, and they stayed. At Hazaroth. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. They said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only with Moses? Hasn't he spoken also with us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all the men who were on the surface of the earth. The Lord spoke suddenly to Moses, to Aaron, and to Miriam. You three, come out to the tent of meeting. The three of them came out. The Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the door of the tent, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. He said, Now hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision. I will speak with him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. He is faithful in all my house. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even plainly and not in riddles, and he shall see the Lord's form. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? The Lord's anger burned against them, and he departed. The cloud departed from over the tent, and behold, Miriam was leprous, as white as snow. Aaron looked at Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Aaron said to Moses, O my Lord, please don't count this sin against us, in which we have done foolishly, and in which we have sinned. Let her not, I pray, be as one of the dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. Moses cried to the Lord, saying, Heal her, God, I beg you. The Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, shouldn't she be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut up outside of the camp seven days, and after that she shall be brought in again. Miriam was shut up outside of the camp seven days, and the people didn't travel until Miriam was brought in again. Afterward, the people traveled from Hazaroth and encamped in the wilderness of Paran. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men that they may spy out the land of Canaan, which I give to the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a prince among them. Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the commandment of the Lord. All of them were men who were heads of the children of Israel. These were their names. Of the tribe of Reuben, Shemua, the son of Zakur. Of the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Hori. Of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, 
the son of Jephunneh, of the tribe of Issachar, Egal, the son of Joseph, of the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun, of the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphu, of the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodai, of the tribe of Joseph, of the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi, of the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gamali, of the tribe of Asher, Sather, the son of Michael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Nabhi, the son of Vafsi, of the tribe of Gad, Geuel, the son of Maki. These are the names of the men who Moses sent to spy out the land. Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and he said to them, Go up this way by the south, and go up into the hill country, see the land, what it is, and the people who dwell therein, whether they are strong or weak, whether they are few or many. And what is the land that they dwell in, whether it is good or bad, and what cities they are that they dwell in, whether in camps or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it is fertile or poor, whether there is wood therein or not. Be courageous and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin to Rehob, to the entrance of Hamath. They went up by the south and came to Hebron and Ahiman, Sheshai and Talmai. The children of Anak were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. They came to the valley of Eshkol and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bore it on a staff between two. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the children of Israel cut down from there. They returned from spying out the land at the end of forty days. They went and came to Moses, to Aaron, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, to the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word to them and to all the congregation. They showed them the fruit of the land. They told him and said, We came to the land where you sent us. Surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Amalek dwells in the land of the south. The Hittite, the Jebusite, and the Amorite dwell in the hill country. The Canaanite dwells by the sea and along the side of the Jordan. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let's go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who went up with him said, We aren't able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had spied out to the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that eats up its inhabitants, and all the people who we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came from the Nephilim. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were. In their sight. Father God, there are so many lessons for us in your word. Jealousy is such an ugly thing. Help us to keep our hearts soft and free from jealousy, Father, for we each have our own unique part to play in your plan. We are each called according to your purpose, not ours. And help us to trust you, Father. Your word is truth. Anything to the contrary is an evil report. You have given us great and precious promises, Father. Help us to focus on your word and not on our circumstances. 
Help us to see ourselves as you see us, not as insignificant grasshoppers. You are good, Father, and we give you all of our praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to invite you to join our Facebook community and to share your thoughts about today's reading. I put a link in the notes. We've come a long way, but we still have a lot of people to meet and experiences to share. I want to thank you for joining me on this journey of reading the Bible in a year. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast and share it. And know that I'm praying for you as we journey together. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.